Welcome to the Painting Experience Podcast for May 2015. On the podcast, founder Stuart Cubley explores the potential of the emerging field of process arts and shares inspiration from his ongoing workshops and retreats. In this episode, Stuart discusses one of the basic ground rules of a painting experience workshop. Why are we asked not to comment on each other's paintings? There's a basic ground rule that we undertake when we start the painting process, and it's the ground rule of not commenting. Not commenting on each other's paintings, not commenting on each other's processes, and essentially creating an environment in which you realize you're going to have the freedom to create without the influence of others' opinions. And sometimes this feels a little rigid. You might think, well, why can't I comment on other people's paintings? I see them. I mean, I'm in the same room, and some of them really move me. I just would like to be able to, to say, hey, I really, I really enjoy what you've done. That's really, that's really pretty special. That's cool. It may not be immediately obvious why we do this, but it's actually quite important, and I might say it allows us to go deeper in our own internal exploration. There are sometimes people who come into the painting experience who've been wounded in art school or other courses in which there's been critiquing. And sometimes this is really harsh. It creates a situation in which a person abandons their creative process in painting. It almost feels like it's kind of an institutional abuse in which you have to subject yourself to not only the teachers, but perhaps other people's opinions on your work and explain what you're doing and, and actually take a lot of negative feedback. So that's one reason why it can feel quite liberating for someone to come into an environment in which we're not doing that. But I would say the same holds for positive comments, and this is what's perhaps not so well understood. Just imagine that someone walks up to you, you've been painting, you're first of all engaged in this process in which there's no model or theme, you're not being told what to do, there's not rules about what it should look like, there's no one measuring, there's not going to be any awards or contests, and someone walks up to you and says to you, I really like what you've been doing, that painting just moves me so much. And this becomes quite confusing because in this environment, a working in process, you're already dealing with this cacophony of internal voices and trying to find your way amidst this inner landscape in which you have your own judgments to deal with. Because at one point you may like what you're doing and another point you don't like what you're doing and then there's the story that you're dealing with. There's a myriad of voices going on internally, which you're learning to navigate through your own experience. The last thing you need at that point is an external voice coming in. Sometimes people say to me, we're grown-ups. We have to learn how to be in society and not be so influenced by what other people think of us. And certainly that's true. But when you are attempting to access the subtlety of listening that's required, it really is not helpful. And I don't think we should expect to be unaffected by other people's voices. We are social animals. We do care what people think about us. It's a rare person that I meet who is not affected by another person's comment on their painting and who can go on as though it didn't really matter. If you know that someone is holding your painting in high regard, for example, say they've made a nice comment about it. That's very disruptive because you are inevitably going to be feeling and wondering whether, if you continue, whether they'll continue to hold your painting in as high regard or whether they'll dislike it if you take a risk and do something different. And then, of course, when one person says something about your painting, you start wondering, well, what do the other people think? And it's just downhill from there. You find yourself getting very distracted. When you're accessing inner spontaneity and listening to 
those quiet voices that you're now giving permission to emerge, there's an unselfconsciousness about that. You're totally involved in the action of the painting itself. And when someone comes along and makes a comment on what you're doing, all of a sudden you step outside of it. And it creates this painting as an object. This person, through commenting on it, has turned your painting from a process into an object. It's pretty hard to regain your ground for a while after that. And that's really what happens when another person makes a comment and labels what you're doing, is that it takes you outside of yourself. When I announce this often in the first evening of a workshop, I notice that people's shoulders drop about three inches. And there's just a feeling like, oh, thank you. I don't have to do that. I don't have to receive comments. I don't have to give comments. I don't have to come up with something intelligent or helpful or at least neutral to say about somebody's painting. I can really focus on my own experience. I can really afford to take risks because knowing that no one's going to comment, I don't have to watch my back. I don't have to explain myself. I don't have to defend myself. And so I can afford to try things that I would not try in other situations. And something special happens once that starts to settle in. First of all, everyone drops more deeply into their own experience because they're not concerned about the social aspect of it. And dropping into your own experience creates an energy field. There's a way in which by not commenting on another person's painting, you're holding the space for them. And it's felt. There's something respectful, deeply respectful, about witnessing, which we are all doing because we're in the same room, we're in each other's visual field, we're seeing what's happening. And there's something tremendously respectful about witnessing another person's process visually and energetically because you see them the way they're moving and you often get a sense of feelings that are happening. So witnessing that without commenting is a very powerful message sent to the person who is painting. You feel it. You feel as though you're in the field of something quite profound. And it builds. When you have a group of people who are all together doing their own internal work without commenting on the content. There's a field that gets developed and it supports each person within that field. Everyone is in their own way is coming back to the ground of their own being through accessing the, the creative process. And that after all is the purpose of the painting experience. Now, I think it's interesting to ask what the ramifications of not commenting are beyond the painting process. Because at the end of a workshop, people are often very deeply impressed by the space that was opened up through not commenting and the access that that allowed them to perceive different levels of their own creative process and of their own inner experience. And so it's a natural question to ask, how does this apply beyond painting? Is, this some, is there a larger truth here that is something that I can actually carry forward? And obviously, I think there is. I think that the understanding and experience of not commenting, even when you're in a visual field in, in which, which is very rich, and, and that your reflexive mind would want to comment and want to say something, and that being held in abeyance and the experience of what that yields when you don't comment and make a statement about and label another person's experience, first of all, carries back to your own experience in painting and you realize how much we do it to ourselves internally and mostly in a diminishing way in which we judge what we're doing. We trust less and respect less of our own experience than uh, perhaps we do of others. And so there's a carryover in terms of our own inner experience. And how do I carry that forward into my life? 
There was a statement made by a man who I studied with years ago, Moshe Feldenkrais, a very creative uh, individual, innovator, and developed a way of working with awareness through movement. And uh, at one point in the training, made this statement that intelligence is a function of inhibition. And this is rather striking because you think, well, no, I mean, inhibition is suppression, and being inhibited is not being intelligent. But he meant this in a very technical way, I think, in terms of the terminology of the functioning of the nervous system, in that we have certain reflexive actions as exhibited in movement. They're kind of habits that may not be the most effective and efficient for our functioning, and that by learning to not do those reflexive actions, what he means by inhibition, by not doing them, it opens up pathways and doorways to a more effective way of being and a way more effective way of moving. And so the act of inhibition is not really suppressing, it's more not doing. And not doing is something that happens naturally and almost automatically when, when there's an awakening, when there's a witnessing. And I think that's the essence of not commenting that we practice in the painting process, is really a type of witnessing. It allows a quality and a depth of witnessing which is not possible when we act reflexively and we just say whatever comes to our mind. And of course, this is a quality of intelligence that we experience in our lives and in relationship, especially that the a depth of conversation and a depth of people meeting often occurs in the context of being willing to withhold opinions and a willingness to not say the first thing that comes to your mind or, and the willingness not to label another person and to file away something in a familiar place, but to be able to hold another person's experience and all its complexity and maybe even all its contradiction without needing to draw an immediate conclusion. That's what allows a subtlety and depth of relationship. And it's a higher form of intelligence. It is true intelligence. And this is really what's developed. This is what people experience at the end of a painting workshop, that this has been activated, that there's a, a larger space in which your own experience is held and your experience of others as well as your experience of yourself. And that's very rewarding. And the carryover is profound in terms of uh, how we live our lives. You can learn more about the painting experience and find a list of upcoming process painting workshops by visiting our website at www.processarts.com. If you enjoyed what you heard today, please share it with a friend. The theme music for this podcast comes from Stefan Jacob. We thank you for listening and hope you'll join us again soon.